the SSR is a, it's a essentially a consulting book and it's kind of like an almanac. Uh, and there's very sophisticated um, high-end research about stallion performance. But our objective is to produce um, you know, the best stallion performance analysis we can. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that, um, that we found uh, that, that uh, the bigger farms and stallion operations, uh, you know, everybody wants to know the answer to is, is, you know, how do you predict what stallions are going to be successful and are not going to be successful? From an objective point of view, is there anything we can find that tells you, that gives you a, 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 an advantage, a leg up in trying to find who the, who the, which of these stallions, which of all these, you know, sparkling prospects that, that, you know, all have something to recommend them, basically, that go to stud, which ones are most likely to succeed. And we analyzed about 150 data points to do with their race record. Mm -hmm. And our analysis is strictly on race record. So we have not taken the pedigree into account at all. This is okay. just an analysis of race record. And of those uh, data points that my partner, Emily Plant, who's the real statistical uh, wizard in this operation, right. uh, when she analyzed it, she found there was nine uh, criteria that correlated high enough with sire success that we could say, these are factors in sire success. Okay. And we found a couple of surprising things when we did this analysis. Um, two things in particular is that they needed this, the horses needed to achieve a very high level of form, but they needed to achieve it more than once. So horses who did it just once uh, don't necessarily have a high correlation to sire success. Uh, for example, one of the nine criteria turned out to be to have run the second highest buyer figure of 110 or more. Mm -hmm. And there are very few horses these days that run 110 buyer figures. Uh, uh, so, uh, but we found that not only do they have to do it once, they have to do it more than once. The general profile that we found is uh, horses who achieve a very high level of form as three-year-olds more than once. Uh, and and uh, the West Coast did that well. Interestingly, when we went back and uh, historically studied back to 1998, in fact, and we threw in AP Indy because we thought, you know, like he's the, he's the benchmark really for sire success. So we went back and took him and then we had 11 crops of sires from 1998 to 2008 plus AP Indy. We found there was only seven horses that, uh, that achieved nine out of nine uh, sire points uh, by our criteria. And uh, of the seven, six of them were top 10% stallions. And the other was a top 20% stallion, uh, which was Dixie Union. And the, the other six were AP Indy, Giants Causeway, Montju, Galileo, Empire Maker, and Bernardini. And all of them turned out to be $50,000 plus stallions, you know, plus usually a lot higher than that. By 2018, there'd only been nine horses that had fulfilled these criteria. Seven of them were top 10% stallions. Mm -hmm. Eight of them were top 20% stallions. So, you know, to us, I mean, this is a very good indicator. This is the highest success rate indicator I've ever seen in trying to predict stallion success. So West Coast scored nine out of nine. What West Coast did was he got good after the Triple Crown. You know, he never ran in the Triple Crown races. His first stakes win was in the Easy Goer. And then he won the Travers and the Pennsylvania Derby and ran third in the Breeders' Cup Classic, as mentioned, and became deservedly the three-year-old champion. He was the best three-year-old colt of his year. Of all the stallions that have ever scored nine out of nine, there has never been a stallion who scored nine out of nine who at any moment of his stud career stood for $20,000. So West Coast 
you know, even at 35,000, when he started out, he was the best buy of any horse that had ever scored nine out of nine that there'd ever been. And now he's especially the best buy. So to me, to be able to breed, to be able to breed to a horse who scores nine out of nine, who has, you know, basically he's two to five to be a really good sire. Uh, and he's about one to five to be a top 20% sire, but he's, you know, two to five to be a really good sire. Well, for those odds to be able to buy a horse like that, to breed to a horse like that for $20,000, it's almost a giveaway, Chris. I mean, it's, it's almost giving money away. 